I think we're the last demo for today and uh, I'm probably the only thing between uh, the residents getting to happy hour, so we'll try to make it concise. Um, but just wanted to give a quick, quick thank you to the Medtronic team for setting up the lab for us. Uh, Payin came up from Los Angeles to keep me out of trouble. Thank you, Judd, for uh, setting up the robot as well. Um, but we'll just do a quick demo of you know, some robotic uh, pedi uh, pedicle screws and we'll maybe put in an S2AI screw and uh, we'll show you some cool facet decortication features. Um, but in this case, you know, in terms of setup, what we've first done is we actually had a preoperative CT and we've already merged. So we took an AP and an oblique image and we merged the pre-op CT here intraoperatively with the fluoro. And we then um, transfer the images to the navigation system and we've already planned screws um, from basically L4 to S2AI. Um, and you know what I do is I go through and just double check the accuracy of the screw placement. Um, but usually I let my, my team plan the screws and then I'll come in and just double check. Um, but with the pre-op CT, I can also just do this at home and then bring my plan to the OR. And so this is L4, it looks good. We'll go to L5, looks good on the axials. We'll take a look on the sagittals and it looks good. You know, the nice thing about robotic screws, particularly at the cranial segment, is you can really make sure you're out of the facet joints. So if you go back to L4, you know, we're not going to violate these facet joints. Um, so that's obviously important for post-operative back pain. The other thing that you'll see here are these little, like, cones. These are true facet decortication uh, trajectories. And so you can plan a bunch of these into the facets, and we'll show you, but we take a special acorn burr, uh, and we really decorticate these facets um, to create another fusion space, whether you're doing a T-lif, an A-lif, an O-lif. This is just another surface for fusion. And with the robot, it's very easy to decorticate these facets. And um, you don't really have to expose them directly. You can do it under navigation and with the acorn burr. And so we'll show you that in a second. Um, but there's a lot of safety features built into this acorn burr feature. Basically, the robot will go to a position such that it will bottom out. So you can't plunge uh, beyond what you've planned. And so that's a nice safety feature um, that's specifically designed for facet decortication. And then, um, you know, we planned a couple S2AI screws because I think one of the nice things about the robot is you can place these um, pelvic fixation points without having to necessarily expose the entire sacrum. Um, so with that being said, you know, we talked about the registration, the merging, the screw planning, uh, facet decortication. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to quickly and efficiently throw in some pedicle screws. Um, but before we do anything, like I mentioned in my talk this morning, you have to check the accuracy. Um, so one of the first things I do is I call this the chicken foot, and I put it on the robot. There's a, actually a design divot here to make sure that the reference array knows where the robotic arm is in space. And so if you look on the screen here, you'll see that the chicken foot is directly in that divot, and so our robotic accuracy is actually perfect. Um, we actually checked this five minutes ago and someone probably bumped the bed and so there's actually quite a bit of a shift so we we, um, we recalibrated and now we're good. So you always have to check that. The other thing I do is I'll check a surface landmark. So I'll usually put it right on a spinous process and that matches what I'm pushing on. So we're good. The system knows where the patient is in space and the system knows where the robotic arm is in space. Um, for purposes of the demonstration, we're just going to do right L4, right L5. Um, the nice thing about the robot is Peyton already knows exactly what screws I want. She knows I'm going to go to L4 first, and so it's already all lined up. And so the arm will go in line with the planned screw trajectory. It likes to do a little dance for us sometimes. And the first thing we do is we take this navigated dilator, and we already made an incision in line with the planned screw trajectory, but we'll take this navigated dilator, dilator and I already made a fascial release. And if you look on the system, You're gonna, Judd's just going to change the, uh, the tool real quick so it matches. Uh, sorry. There you go. And so you want to feel what you're seeing, right? And so I feel like I'm on bone. It looks like it's on bone. It's not penetrating past the bone. It's not lateral to the bone, so we're accurate. The other thing is I don't know if you can see it on the camera, um, but there's a little laser line. And so you actually want to back this inner dilator out such that it's touching the laser line. Um, let's see. Can you come around? or I'll just show it to you on, on the camera. Basically, there's a laser line right here, and you want to make sure that that is pulled back. You want to make sure your inner cannulate is pulled back to that laser line. Um, because like I said earlier, you don't want your cannula sitting directly on bone because that has a tendency to skive. 
This is the high-speed burr. Like I said, one of the probably biggest advancements in robotics was using this 75,000 RPM burr. Um, it's much better than the 750 RPM burr because it's less likely to skive. Um, and like Jens was talking about when he was doing posterior cervical, same techniques. Just because it's a robot doesn't mean you change your techniques. And we want to start off of bone. We want to start high speed. And this will bottom out at 30 millimeters. And I'm making sure that I'm feeling what I'm seeing. And it'll, always, it'll drop into the pedicle just like that. And that's good. This will bottom out at 30 millimeters. Um, it's almost never an issue unless you're in the upper thoracic spine, then you need to be a little bit careful. Sometimes with a very short sacrum, you need to be careful. Um, you could go out the front if you're not paying attention. This is now a tap. Similarly, I want to feel like I'm falling into this bur the burr hole that I just opened, and it feels good. I'm going to rotate so that this is a bit tricky. Usually, I don't do this on the opposite side. We're good. We're good. And so, like I talked about earlier, there's variance in the system, right? So all I do is I move this frame, and you'll see that the tip is moving on the navigation, even though I'm not moving the tip. So you have to trust the robotic arm. The arm knows where it is in space. And so, like I said, normally I do this on the other side of the bed, but for the camera, um, I'll work across. And so we'll advance. This does not have a positive stop. And so I go full speed, but there's a built-in regulator. And I'll get that white dot. And then I just back out. And then we take everything out. And Peyton's going to swap it out from a tap to the screw. Um, but this is all pre-planned, so she knows exactly um, what we've planned for this particular cadaver. Thank you. And so this is a perk system. So there's some built-in percutaneous towers that are already on the screws to allow us to uh, eventually pass a rod. Like I said, I'm working across, so I got to kind of keep my hand out of the way of the reference frame. But there's the screw. I felt myself fall into the hole. Um, what I'm seeing on the nav frame is ex our screen is exactly what I'm feeling, and I'm just going to go full speed, and it's, I'm going to get a torque. I'm going to get a white dot right there. Perfect. And so that's exactly um, where we planned our screw. The white dot means we're within about a millimeter, and then you take this off and you move on to your next level. And so we'll go to L5 just for purposes of demonstration. Um, so same exact steps. Navigated dilator all the way down. We're making sure we have a generous fascial release. We're down to bone. I'm feeling what I'm seeing. I'm going to back the gold cannula out just a bit so I'm not directly on bone. We'll take the navigated drill. Once again, high speed, 75,000 RPMs. We start off bone, full speed. In, out, we'll take the tap, watch your hand, knife. Once again, a little awkward just because I'm working across from myself, which I don't usually do. Perfect. And then we'll take the screw. And so, you know, I think the more screws you do with the robot in a given case, the more time you will make up, because obviously you lost a little bit of time in terms of the setup, but I guarantee you I can gain time back the more screws I do, um, because at this point it's just three steps at every level. And so this is the screw. Put it in. Once again, I want to feel like I fell into the hole, which I just felt. Perfect. And then we send it. And this is all on power. Um, which is great for my personal ergonomics, my rotator cuff, my carpal tunnel. Um, super easy, minimal physical burden, minimal cognitive load. Um, so that's it. And so if you wanted to pass um, rods, you easily could. Um, but like I said, I think one of the other cool features about the robot is putting in pelvic fixation through a minimally invasive technique. So Judd's going to send it to the right S2AI trajectory. And what I do is I take this dilator and I kind of see where it's going to line up on the skin. And normally, we're doing bilateral fixation, but for purposes of this lab, we'll just um, do the right side. And so I'll make an incision, a midline incision, in line with that planned S2AI screw. The key, though, is I'll, even though I made a midline incision, I'm actually going to undercut the fascia with, um, we have a blade that's specifically designed to go through the robot. Um, I call it the sexy knife, but it's got a bunch of different names. And so this will go through the skin incision in line with the planned fascial incision. 
I'm gently pulling the skin cranially and caudally just to make sure I have a generous fascial release like we talked about. And so now we're in line with the S2AI screw. Gonna be careful. And then it's the same exact steps that we did for pedicle screws. Inner dilator to keep the soft tissue away from us. We're down. I'm gonna back up the cannula just so we're not skiving. Super high skive potential here. Then I take my high speed burr. Perfect. I, f I see how you could skive right off the sacrum there. So I'm gonna start off bone, running start, light hands, and let the drill do the work. Don't force it. And it's just like butter, it'll go through. And we're right at the outer border of the sacrum. I'll take a tap. Sometimes with really cortical bone, um, you actually need to have the team crank up the RPMs on the poweries um, to be able to get through the bone, but we'll see what happens here. Going across, going across, yeah, it's cadaver bone. And so we plan short screws just because we don't have like 85s or 90s available to us, but the steps are the exact same. Um, if we were truly putting in like an 8.5, 9.5, 10.5, then we would tap to one millimeter below the final screw. Um, but purely for purposes of the demonstration, we'll put in a, a 6.5, like 55, because that's what we have available to us. Um, but nothing really changes if you, if you truly had iliac or um, 8.5s, 9.5s, 10.5s. And so that felt like I'm in the hole. Judd, I need the screw projection. <laughs> well, do you need to? So sorry. Uh. He's just going to drop the arm a bit because we have short tools. Yeah. Perfect. And so then we just put in the screw. And like I said, there's a bit of variance in the system. So don't try to force the robot arm into somewhere where it doesn't want to go. Trust the arm. So we'll send it across. And we'll get a white dot when we're close right there. And that's it. And so, take off the tower and, you know, basically you can f fight the skin and you could easily pass a rod connecting you from S2AI to L4, L3, L2, whatever you want. Um, but you know that rod's gonna line up because you planned a straight rod on your preoperative plan. Um, the last thing we wanted to show you, you guys, that's I think a pretty cool feature of the Mazor system is this facet decortication. Like I said, it truly is a, a trajectory that's designed to decorticate the facets. You're not putting in like a false trajectory or a fake screw. It's, a, it's an actual cone that will carve out bone. Um, and it's, this, it's got some safety features designed. So the arm will purposely go to a stop point such that you can't plunge deep beyond what you've already planned. And so Judd's gonna send to what, right L45? Perfect. And so we're at the right L45 facet. Same exact steps. You drop the cannula all the way down. Clear out the soft tissue. We've actually swapped out the burr, so we're no longer using a, um, a this is an acorn burr. And so it's designed to really take out uh, the facet capsule, the facet cartilage, and the bone. And we start, drop my hand, there we go. We start off bone, high speed, and it's just burring out the facet. And there, once you get that red dot, that's, it's not gonna let you go any further. And so if you have a very large overgrown facet, you, and you can see the bone that we just took out. It's all cortical bone. Um, if you have a very large uh, facet, you can plan multiple trajectories. Um, and then you basically you can backfill through the cannula or there's a special device that you can actually put bone graft in and directly inject into the facet. Um, but you know, that's it for you know per percutaneous pedicle screw placement, pelvic screw, placement, uh, facet decortication. I don't know if the, uh, the team back in the, the lecture hall wants to see anything else specific with regards to the Mazor robot or any questions. Uh, no, that looks great, Ram. Can we do, uh, can we get a floral? Is there, 
Is there a possibility just to check? Or is that? Jens does Oh, Flora, yeah, let's do it. Let's is that a thing? Jens, we're, we're checking. Jens is the big cynic, you know. He yeah, let's think. do it. So, <laughs> he, um, uh, I'm not too worried. They felt pretty good. Yeah. But I mean, it looks, you did a beautiful uh, job there, Ram. You, you made it look uh, really easy. So, like I said, we've, we've yeah. never missed a screw and drop, awesome. but there's always a... Um, you know, it's interesting. I don't know how you feel, but it's kind of a different, um, just, uh, it's a different um, approach. You know, I feel like my brain isn't as taxed uh, yeah. because you're not having to do fluoro. And, you know, it seems like it's, there's, there's just a different feel to it. Absolutely. You know, I think um, one of the biggest benefits yeah. is cognitive load. And so you can yeah, put exactly. in these screws and not really have to think about it. Of course, you got to be careful, verify your accuracy. Um, but it allows you to yeah. focus on the more important part of the case, reconstruction, decompression, et cetera. Actually, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And then certainly the other and part I is... Know, I know David's been fantastic. using more and more of it. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, so I, I agree that when yeah. it works, is less cognitive sure. load. But the oh. truth is to learn this is a much bigger cognitive load. You know, a typical day, I could put in 16 screws in two hours open in a scoliosis, then I take more than an hour per screw for a robot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally. How agree. long is it going to take? It's okay. I mean, yeah. maybe what we'll do is if, if uh, maybe we'll get an x ray and then um, we can just uh, get a picture of it. So. Yeah. I think the uh, the Flora machine went down, so okay, they're, they're rebooting right. it. No problem. But I, I promise okay. you they're good. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, Vegas will take some odds on it, that one. Yeah. Robot versus C-arm failure, no question. Robot, yeah, we should have a competition, robot yeah. versus C-arm. Yeah. Actually, can I make one other um, yeah. Point. Ram, you made a good point in making certain that on the Thank you. superior or upper instrumented vertebra, you don't nail the joint. You know, in adult spine surgery, you always talk about adding on. Just wanted to you did a study at a... for L5 S1 fusions. One in three times the screws nailed the joint. Nobody believed it was true at first. It was amongst all surgeons, amongst robot, nav, freehand. So I think that happens a lot more than uh, we admit to ourselves. So with that, um, we're going to conclude uh, the